grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The text for our meditation this evening is written for us in 1 John chapter 4, beginning at the first verse. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see if they are from God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit who confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit who does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist which you have heard is coming and is already in the world. You are from God, dear children, and you have overcome the false prophets because the one in you is greater than the one in the world. They are from the world. That is why they speak from a worldly perspective and the world listens to them. But we are from God. The one who knows God listens to us. But whoever is not from God does not listen to us. That is how we can distinguish between the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Let us pray. These are your words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us through the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. In Christ Jesus, the teacher of truth, dear fellow redeemed, that's fake news. Whether you agree with the use of that term, whatever your thoughts are about it, doesn't really matter. It is evident that there are at least two strongly divergent narratives being told by our news outlets. If you want to dispute that, just think for a moment of how many people buy into fake news. There's obviously enough evidence there that they've concluded that that title, that term, is true and valid. So, as we listen to the news today, how can we be sure that we're being told the truth? Maybe now more than ever, it's important for people to dig. To not just accept what they're told, but to dig and find out the truth. Otherwise, you can become a victim of fake news. When Paul traveled on his missionary journeys, he would first go to the synagogue of the town. He would speak to the Jewish worshipers there and tell them that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that he was crucified, but God raised him from the dead. Unfortunately, often the news that he was brought or that he brought, was branded as fake news by those that heard it. They didn't dig in and find out if he was telling the truth. They just rejected it. The Bereans, were told, were of a different character. They didn't accept what Paul said just because he said it. No, we're told in the book of Acts that they went home and they searched the Scriptures to make sure that what Paul was telling them was the truth. And as they sought the truth in God's Word, they found it. And they were convinced that the good news that, that Paul brought them was actually the truth. In fact, Paul being sent to them was Jesus coming to them, 
with the truth that he is the Savior. That's really our Advent prayer this evening. Lord Jesus, come to me with your truth. I could say that we have two petitions to that prayer this evening. The first is, help me test the spirits. Help me confess that you have come in the flesh. So help me test the spirits. For a number of decades now in Christianity, Matthew 7 verse 1 has been quoted where Jesus said, judge not or you will be judged. And it has been promoted then that you can't judge anyone. You can't judge what anyone believes or teaches. In fact, it's, it's told that Jesus told us not to judge However, that's a distortion of what Jesus actually said. Jesus was actually saying more along what John says in our text. John commands us to continually test the spirits. Jesus in Matthew 7 went on to say, with the same standard you judge, you will be judged. That's very different from don't judge at all. With the same standard you judge, you will be judged. Test the spirits. Why would Jesus tell us to have a standard for judging? And why would John command us to continually judge the spirits? Well, he explains in our text... He says, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. One of the first truths that we need to grasp about the world we live in is that there is a battle going on around us, a battle of good and evil. There are false prophets that have gone out into the world, false teachers, who are actually messengers of Satan. They lie and deceive. And they want to trick you. John could see that truth about the world we live in, and so he rightly commands us to test the spirits. So what can we test about someone? We can't test their heart because we don't have the ability to see into the heart. God can, but we can't. So when John tells us to test the spirits, he's not telling us to judge their heart. What he's telling us to do is to judge their confession and their actions. Specifically, John is speaking about the teachings that a person believes, their confession. We can analyze what a person believes and teaches about themselves, about the world, about God in general. What the truths of the scriptures are, or at least what they claim to be. We can test those things and judge them. This is not a small thing. And this is not something that only pastors and the very educated in the Bible should be doing. John was writing to everyday Christians just like you and me and saying, test the spirits. See, we are at danger of being influenced by the voices that we hear. Sometimes those voices are outside of us. The friends we keep, the people we listen to, will influence what we believe. So we should be very careful. We should test what we're hearing and if it's true or not. 
So those voices outside of us can have a very significant impact on the inside of us. So beware. Watch out for false prophets, Jesus said. They come to you dressed as sheep in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ferocious wolves. There's a danger to false teaching. But we also have voices on the inside. And we need to be careful about how we listen to them too. Those voices can impact us tremendously physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And so we need to analyze that those voices are telling the truth too. So that voice that says you're fat, or that voice that says you're worthless, or that voice that says you're pitiful, those things need to be tested too. Are you listening to the truth? Test the spirits. Now, in saying those self-critical things, I'm not denying that some of the truth about us is just ugly. And it is scary to truly dig deep inside and look at our spirit, what makes us us. Because what we see is that evil isn't just outside of us, it's inside of us as well. Facing the truth about who and what we are can be just terrifying. But God wants us to know the truth. As Jesus said, The truth will set you free. On the night that Jesus was arrested, he prayed for the church. He prayed for his apostles. He prayed for the church of the future. And he prayed that prayer that many pastors use and I use tonight. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. God wants you to know the truth. In fact, Jesus said to Pilate, everyone on the side of truth listens to me. God wants you to know the truth about yourself and especially about Jesus. So test the spirits. Test the voices that are speaking to you outside and in and make sure that they are speaking the truth of God's Word. And then cling to the truth about Christ. Confess that God's Son came in the flesh. John summarized, in a sense, the whole gospel message when he said, every spirit who confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. With that simple phrase, he was portraying the gravity of what God has done to save sinners like you and me. It's not just speaking about the incarnation that God the Son assumed human nature was born of the Virgin Mary. No, it would include everything that's wrapped up in that. That God became a man to bear the burden of the law in our place. Because we have failed to keep God's commandments, Jesus picked up that tremendous load and placed it on his shoulders. Only a man could carry that law in your place. So God became man because you and I, we were too weak to do it. And God carried, God the Son carried that perfect life to the cross and was nailed there. And he suffered, he offered the payment that our sins demand. 
And so when it speaks about Jesus Christ coming in the flesh, it's pointing to who died on the cross. Jesus wasn't just a man. He was God's son. God died for you on the cross. That's why he was born in Bethlehem. So that he could bear your sins. God poured out his blood in payment for you so that you through that blood could be washed clean of all the things that you've ever done wrong. When that voice of your conscience tells you, ah, you did that and you did this, Jesus' blood silences that voice. Not by denying the truth of its claims, but by offering sufficient payment. That is critical to grasp because there are two truths that we hang on to. That yes, we are pitiful sinners who deserve nothing but God's temporal and eternal punishment. And at the same time, we are forgiven through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus the Christ. Those two truths stand. But one is greater than the other. God's greater word is that you are forgiven. So that John would write in this very epistle, when your heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart. So that voice in your heart and in your mind that tells you you are unworthy, don't listen to that voice. Listen to the voice of God, which truthfully tells you that your sins are forgiven, that you are dearly loved and treasured by God. And that one day, you'll be with him in heaven. That's what God wants you to believe. That's what he wants you to confess. That God's son has come in the flesh so that you can live with him forever in heaven. And God wants you to know that it's true. And so he raised that dead body of Jesus back to life. That human nature of Jesus, which for three days, like our body, would lay cold in the grave. It's now alive. Our living brother, Jesus, is in heaven ruling all things for our good. So it is true. It is true that your sins are forgiven. It is true that God wants you to be with him in heaven. So hold on to that truth. Test the spirits. Don't let any voice cut you off from hearing God's voice. Don't let any voice tell you that God doesn't love you. Don't let any voice divert you from the path to heaven. Any other voice? It's just fake news. It's not the truth. Be like the Bereans. Don't take my word for it. Search the scriptures and you too will see that Jesus is your Savior from sin. God bless us with his Spirit so that we believe this. Lord Jesus, come to me with your truth. Help me test the spirits. Help me confess that you came in the flesh. Amen. Please stand for the blessing.
And now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen.